Hey, what's up, fam? Hey, let's go ahead and get into this whole Tyree Nichols situation, y'all. Uh, if y'all been living on the rock or been in a coma for the last few days, y'all know that brother Tyree was beaten of his life by Memphis police. Uh, you know, a lot of stories that came out about this I mean, since, since then. Um, you know, one particular about a, the rumor <clears throat> that he was messing with uh, one of the officers' wives. We're gonna get into that. We're gonna that's gonna that's, that's gonna be in the story. We're also gonna get into a couple other things too that I want to touch on. So the first one, this is from the FoxNews.com. It says Tyree Nichols' family dismisses rumor in Memphis man's beating death after police stop. Memphis video shows a deadly traffic stop involved in Tyree Nichols and five officers who have since been fired, fired and arrested. Now, as we know, like I said, up to seven officers have been at least relieved of their duties uh, without pay after this. It says five officers or six that are filed beating the man. One with the body camera has uh, tasing the brother. But then they say there are probably like maybe four or five other officers that are there. You know, eventually, while the man's just laying there, nobody's trying to render aid, right? And the EMTs, for whatever reason, you know, she... You know, they did nothing. Now, remember, his mother said that she believed that her son was, you know, had passed away. You know what I'm saying? During like, at the during the beat, okay, that night that the beating took place, that she that he was gone, that he was just on life support for whatever reasons, maybe organ harvesting or whatever. I don't know. That's what I'm saying, not her. But here's what I know. Seen with my own eyes before. Seen a person, you know, pass out, lose consciousness or whatever. And now I'm on this call, CPR has been administered. By the time the ambulance get there, which in a couple of hours, couple of minutes, I mean a few minutes, they come to the situation, come assess the situation. And they get they, they put the person like on the hardboard on the gurney, taking them out, taking them to the ambulance, and they're not administering the same level of let me see resuscitative measures that the other people were. I mean, barely even they're doing like CPR, but I've seen a guy put the uh, put the unconscious person in. The ambulance doing CPR like with one hand, and I'm, and, and I'm like, what the heck are they doing? But in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, this person must be, this must person must be already be gone, and they know it. But then it came in, assessed, did everything, you know, we're gonna try to do what we can, but pretty much this dude is gone. And so, I say that to say that's probably why those EMTs did nothing because. Days, like I say, he was probably out of there. There was no need that they probably felt in their expertise that to do anything. Probably all of them felt that there was no need to do it because if he was breathing, I believe. Now, unless he, you know, done deleted a few police officers or people in their family or did have an affair with one of the officers' wives or whatever. That would be the only reason I would see that they would not administer aid to the brother. But if he was, our life was already had been snuffed out, then they're not gonna do it. Most likely they may assess him and say, oh, it's too late, we're not gonna do anything. But for, you know, what you say, the safe face, uh, they're gonna go on TV and be like, hey, they didn't do what protocol is, you know what I'm saying? No matter what they thought or felt, you know what I'm saying? They should have did just that and the other. They didn't, so they got to go. Not saying what they did wasn't justified. It just was not protocol. You feel what I'm saying? So, 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 so Brother Nichols' mother may have a basis, may, may have been right about that. So let's go to this. So let's continue reading this uh, article. They say a rumored, a rumored relationship between Tyree Nichols and a wife or, or a girlfriend of one of the five Memphis police officers accused of his deletion is not true, according to his stepfather. Speaking at a prayer vigil in Memphis Monday night, 
writing the well sought to dispel the idea of the prayer vigil outside his home in Memphis Monday night, just yards from where his 29 year old stepson was beaten senseless earlier this month. Quote, my son was not messing around with one of the officer's wives, he told supporters outside his home in Memphis in a video shared by Fox 13. That's just a rumor. Here's my question. You know, Brother Wells don't want to sound disrespectful or seem indifferent or have no compassion about the situation, but how would you know? How would you know that he was he was not, how would you know that he was not having a relationship with anyone? Especially if she was a married man. I mean, she was a married woman. Or a relationship with a police officer. How would you know? Because it's not something that I would think he would put out there to the world. See what I'm saying? I mean, how many how, how many people have we known in the past that we heard that, you know, person has died, you go to the funeral, and all of a sudden, two, three, four kids, two, three baby mamas come out the woodworks and nobody knew they even existed. See what I'm saying? So, or, 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 or someone's about to get married, then all of a sudden the mistress come out the back with a baby in hand, talking about, oh, no, this ain't going to happen. I mean, so not saying that it did. I'm just saying, how would you know? My thing is just don't go out there and put out just facts. Put out statements that's facts when you don't know what may have actually happened. You feel me? Okay, so it said police tried to cover it up. Wells continue. They are still trying to spread rumors about my son that are not true. I really don't understand why they would spread that rumor because that'll make the situation worse because from what I hear, and I didn't watch the video, people say, if you watch the video, you see that they, you know, they beat this man and like stood him up and then kept, you know, and was punching him in the face. It was like a personal attack. And you didn't see the beginning of, you didn't see the, him getting pulled over or whatever, the initial confrontation. All you see is him breaking free from them and taking off. Little man getting beat down by five monsters. The police initially stopped Nichols at Rains and Ross Road at 8.22 p.m. for alleged reckless driving, which means, I don't know if he's driving reckless or not, right? He broke free and ran to Castlegate, which means he was out the car for whatever reason, and for some reason, took off running. But we don't know why, probably never will know why. I'm sure one of these people is gonna snitch, though. I'm quite sure one of them will. A few yards from his mother's house when police caught up with him again. I think his mother said he was like 80 yards from the house. You know, anyway, to know that my son was calling out my wife's name and we were not able to hear him to help him was devastating. Well said. Attorney Ben Crump, right on cue, and Antonio Romanucci, who are representing Nichols' family, did not respond to Fox News digital request for comment. Uh, and implicated officers do not appear to reference an alleged affair at any point in the fourth video released Friday. Rumors nevertheless swirled after the, after the animosity shown in videos that captured the, 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 the January 7th encounter, which led to charges, uh, the deletion charges against five police officers in the city's anti-crime Scorpion Unit, which has been disbanded. And we know the Scorpion Unit, I don't know what the acronym stands for, but it's just, just like they had in, they say in LA, Chicago, they probably had them, had them in Dallas, these gang units and stuff. They just go out just hunting young black boys down and, you know, for whatever reason, and black men down for whatever reason. And, you know, it's kind of like, what do you call it? Like a legal way of, what do you call it? Uh, you know, just being able to just pulling people over. You know, just just, just you know pulling people over because of, because of their color or because they're in the wrong neighborhood or, or for whatever. Yeah, in the wrong neighborhood or whatever. You know, uh, that's all it's for. Nickel spent three days in the hospital before succumbing to his injuries, according to the police. Like I said, according to his mama, he was already gone. And again, if the EMTs didn't render aid, most likely he was already gone. In the first body cam video showed the officer arriving to a traffic stop in progress. So, in where is the video that happened before then? 
Officers wrestle with Nichols on the ground before he breaks free and takes off running. So, man, little slippery dude was, you know what I'm saying, had, had skills, huh? They caught up with him less than a half a mile away. Two body cams and a pole mounted camera captured the ensuing struggle. See, officers can, officers can be seen punching and kicking Nichols, hitting him with pepper spray, and beating him with a baton. And they said them batons hurt, like, seriously. Like, it ain't like hitting them with a stick. They said them things are, like, dense. So you get hit with a baton, it can pretty much break it bones in your body just with one hit. They hit you, man. Before they finally prop them up against the side of a car. Now, again, you prop somebody up. Like I said, you want them to look at you before... You take him out, huh? So he appears dazed and blood, blood. And five officers each face more than half a dozen charges, including second degree deletion. They have been identified as Demetrius Haley, to Darius Bean, Emmett Martin III, Desmond Mills, and Justin Smith. Additional officers, sheriff's deputies, and fire department members have been suspended and internal investigations are going on. According to authorities. So then my next question is this here. Since I got you here. Should we, as a community, police ourselves? Police have been involved in a lot of incidents since, I'm going to say since the 70s and 80s. Back around the time that the men in the houses started to disappear for whatever reason. You know, the system, I would say. Uh, welfare system stuff like that, where, you know, the mother can't have a man in the house if you want help from the government. Your man can't find a job. You know, your black man can't find a job or a viable income. So, hey, you know what we'll do? Instead of using this money to help train that man so he can get, you know, make decent amount of money and be able to raise his family and not be in the slums, we'll give you the money. We'll give you food stamps, free medication, and we even pay for your housing. If you want to go to school, you can do that too. You have to go. And we'll do that until them kids get grown. You just got to make sure that man is not in your house. And a lot of us believe that's where it all started. And that's where real life ended. But before then, when you look at statistics and stuff, we didn't have these problems. Main thing is because we had families. Families who were able to, families, men and women, in the house together, in the neighborhoods together, police in the neighborhood, riffraff coming to the neighborhoods. They checking the youngsters. Now, we're scared of the youngsters. They sell dope. They carry guns. They easy and they, they quick to shoot. Don't want to fight. Quick to get real emotional. Having no real dominant male guidance inside or outside the house. Because a lot of them are gone. Maybe in, in the prisons or, you know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't raised by a dad. They had babies and they ran off. See what I'm saying? So, there's a lot of reasons why our neighborhoods are the way they are. And also, but, 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 but here's what I think is missing. You know, I think we should, with, with some of the one of the options we should have. Like I say, there are a lot of, like I say, men missing in the houses in the neighborhood. So why don't we do this? Why don't we, why don't the government, since they want to be all in the business acting like they're helping us, but they're really not, why don't they bring back, or why don't they have, make military be an option for the youngsters? You know, I believe that that would be a very viable resource. I know a lot of people uh, are not going to agree with me. Hell, I don't agree with myself for the most, because, I mean, hell, I'm in my 40s now. And I always said, you know, growing up, I wouldn't join the military. I just wasn't made for, you know. And, you know, at first, I wanted, you know, wanted to be in the Army back in the day. I had to watch Rambo. You know, I thought, oh man, I'm gonna go and join the army, jump out of, you know, become a, you know, a train killer, jump out of trees, you know what I'm saying, and destroy the enemy, take out the enemy, you know, by myself, be a superhero. 
thought about that as a kid until I saw the movie Platoon. Or was a full metal jacket? No, no, it might be Hamburger Hill. One of them doggone movies where uh, first scene, this shit dude just drop out of the sky and his stomach is tore open. I'm like, nah, I ain't gonna be able to do that. You know, I'm gonna have to find something. I'm gonna have to find something else to do besides that because that's not gonna work for me. But anyway, but seriously though, that's just what I'm saying. That's my preference. But a lot of times as youngsters, truth be told, we can't give kids preferences. We gotta, by the time you gotta make people, even grown folks, do what they need to do and not what they want to do, right? So I'm thinking as the youngsters, and I think the reason why I think this would be a viable option is because of military, I feel you could probably control and monitor easier than you can all these individual police departments put your youngsters in the military because you know you got to sign up with civil service at 17 or whatever I mean they can make you do what they want to do so you know get when in the high school you know they can go to military school or whatever I mean it don't have to be military period just, I mean per se but just somewhere where they can learn discipline and structure especially for these kids who don't have a solid Foundation, because you remember back in the day, I don't know how it is now, but that used to be one of the things a lot of people went to was to the military. Like when they got out of high school, that's like the only option that they had. They couldn't afford college, you know, couldn't make enough money in the little town they was in, so they went and joined the military. So, you know, I got you no know, family members, uncles, cousins. You know who did who did who did just that you know and some of them retired from the military made good money living good on retirement you know what i'm saying they solid individuals you know what i'm saying no problems i think you may have to bring that back too if you're going to join the police force there need to be at least a two-year minimum of training Especially now, because you see the problems that I have. You can't go to, you can't train people to use a gun to take action to make life and death situations, make life life and death decisions. You know, at a moment's notice, you know, and only train them for a few weeks and think they're gonna always make the right decision. See, you know, you got a problem. But there's a shortage. Think about this. There's a shortage of nurses. There's a shortage of policemen. Nursing is a shortage. But they're not, and you know, back in the day, nursing all you need was like a certification. Now you need at least two, four, or more years to get a nursing degree. They're not going to go back to certifications for nursing. But policemen, and even nursing, and, and uh, doctor and uh, or nurse practitioner or whatever take like I said, those you like I say take years and then you got to take a test and then you still got to get on the job training. Policemen, there's a shortage of policemen. They make life or death decisions every day, whether it be their life or the life of the person that they're, that they're going to the, to the patrol on. And they only got to take like a class for a few weeks training just gotta be physically fit take a freaking test and now you're a police officer and they put you out on the beat brand new going against these seasoned criminals who a lot of them been doing what they're doing for years but you just starting out so my thing is and I know in some countries I think I think it's the policemen and even like prison guards I think they 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 have to be trained, go to school for like two years before they actually can become, get into those fields. And so I think that's what needs to be happening. We can holler, defund the police all you want to. <sighs> that's not gonna solve a crime problem because okay, you get rid of police, now what? Now you got nobody that nobody's worried about. Look at Louisiana back when they had them laws where that if you was, if something, if you were, uh, accused of deleting somebody and they put you in jail. They had like 48 hours to prove it or they got to let you go. Which then they said that's one of the reasons why a lot of people 
wouldn't talk to the police down there and how the, how the deletion rate went up because the laws is all jacked up. So my, my, in other words, taking the police, the investigators and stuff pretty much out the equation after a couple of days. So imagine you just defund the police and you just have less police than what you have now. Imagine defunding the nursing institute, nursing school. So now they can't put out as many nurses as you need. Then you have the situation like they had in Florida where these schools then gave out mil oh, no, millions of dollars worth of fake nursing degrees to like 7,000 nurses. You know what I'm saying? It's probably done because there's a shortage. It's probably one reason why they got it too and then they got greedy. So, but, so you have to, you can complain to get, and, 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 you know, and talk to get rid of an issue, but you gotta have something else to fix. You gotta have some way of correcting it. So you can't just defund the police and you just leave it like it is. I wouldn't defund the police. You would probably wipe it out and start over. That's probably the first thing you need to do. But yeah, you gotta find a way to revamp the system, not just get rid of it. You gotta get rid of it and create a new one and better one. And, but sometimes you gotta go back to the, what, what, what works. If it works in other countries, why in the heck you don't think it work here? You know, if, if, if like I say, if, if these people, if these men have to go to, like I say, some countries, them boys have to go to the military. They have to go to the military at the age, what, 14, I think? But the crime rate is down. Because, and why I say the military, because again, it creates discipline, teaches discipline and structure. So when these young men get out into the world to start their own family and live their own lives, when they get to their communities, and it's a little rip, riff raff or a little crime or a little petty stuff, kids get out of hand, people get out of hand. You have a community that come community that comes together to fix that situation. What is their story? One let me see. There's a story online. God, I wish I just thought about it right now. But Google this though. There was a guy, I think he was in the military and he was um, he living in a neighborhood, bought a house in the neighborhood, and the quote unquote, I guess, street hoodlums, gang member, gang bank members, I think it was in Arkansas, but I'm not sure. They pretty much, I guess, either for some reason, they got into it with him, and there were some threats, you know, held to each side, you know, yelled out to each side or whatever. And, uh, they threatened the military guy, not knowing he was military, okay? So he called his friends over and told them what was up. Said, hey, come over, we're gonna have a party. You know, everybody bring your weapons. They come over, have a party, bring the weapons, whatever the case. They see, let me see, and I'm paraphrasing the story, I don't remember the whole thing, but, for, but anyway, for whatever reason, the, the gang members in the, in the neighborhood pulls up too close to his house. Somebody see him. They shut the lights off. Anyway, the whole battle ensues. My point is, the man in that house, military, was not afraid. He brought over buddies that he knew were not afraid. Game bangers probably weren't afraid either, or they probably underestimated the white guy. So they was out to shoot, have a shootout too. But my point is, you have men that you know that are going to defend the property, defend their life against people who threatening or trying to take their life because that's one of the things that they was trying to do anyway. But anyway, that's all I got for this story. You know, uh, I'm hoping these officers, you know, they do get charged. They are charged. I hope they actually serve jail time. Long jail, long jail sentences. Uh, I'm hoping that this would help find some kind of way to reform all police officers, all police, you no know, officers and uh, units, police units or whatever you want to call it. The system, the police system as a whole. 
and to make this country safe and you know better to live in because it's only getting worse it seems like until they can actually come up with a solution I mean, when you have a problem you don't come up with a solution bottom line it's gonna get worse and you know that so let's just do what we need to do it's not hopefully everybody can do play our we all play our parts to do what we need to do to make the world safe but with that being said tell me what you think about this story uh leave your comments below and then share it with the world with that being said i leave you in peace and i'll see you on the other side